This is the Blaring Out with Eric Blair Show, and today we're here at the beautiful Renaissance Hotel in Hollywood, California for the Judas Priest Farewell Tour press conference. It's a pretty much an open forum. Um, we're about to launch the world tour, so that might be a good place to start, and we'll just take it from there and see where we go. This is Richie Faulkner, ladies and gentlemen. Hey. Without whom we will be sitting at this table right now, quite probably, which is the fact, yes. Yeah. We know the rest of us down here. So, so uh, this uh, upcoming world tour has uh, been billed uh, as the final world tour. Oh, but well, clearly uh, you're still an active fan. Uh, could you clarify? It's not the end of the band by any means. It's, it's, you know, it's just our last world tour. It takes a big chunk out of like 18 months, really. We'll be out there. We've been doing it for nearly 40 years now. So. It's not to say that you know it will be at our last show, I and mean, we certainly will and have been recording. So you know the chances are there will be an album as well next year, and you know we we would never turn down the appropriate dates if we were up to them at some point in the future. But it will be our last one, so it's probably the last chance that most people will get to see Jesus Peace live. We want to go out one final time and play our songs, just be together with the audience. I think what, uh, yeah, what, what we've said is, you know, you know when the cowboy right, rides into sunset on his horse and it's like a little tree crawl? Well, we want to do the same things on our bikes, you know, <laughs> on the motorbikes, so we don't fall off, you know. I think it's unfortunate that it's kind of a, there's an area in show business when you, you really need to, to look at what you've got, what you've done, and be proud of it, and then just make that exit in a really classy way, and that's what we're what we're attempting to do. Uh, you've been working on material for the new Priest record. Uh, what can we expect uh, and, and, you know, on the record? And um, what uh, era do you think it's going to be most like this new material? Well, it's quite a mixed bag. And um, we've concentrated on two things that the archetype of Priest double kick screaming tracks. And uh, really, there's, there's, there's more sentiment in this album. Uh, it's just, in a way, I suppose it's also a fair amount of the one with my love, our last one. And it's, uh, there are some anthems on there which pay tribute to our fans. And it's our way of saying thank you, and the lyrics relate to that. Um, just saying thank you to the fans for all you. It's been a real pleasure to write it because, you know, at this point, you know, if there's anything left to prove, there really isn't anything left to prove, you know. We've, we've been there, done that, got the t shirt, got the thing. But I think what, what really is. Um, important is that we still have this, this desire, this passion, you know, it hasn't diminished in nearly 40 years, we, we still have this tremendous love of, of what we do in heavy metal music and the fans that support us, the constant inspiration, and I think we all agree that as much as we were very happy with the way that Nostradamus came out, that was a great moment for us because we've been waiting forever to make this concept record and that's not the end with most of the arms. We have other ideas that we want to explore later, but um, we wanted to make at least, as Ben said, one more great metal album that really has all the great traditions and attributes of Priest in the, in the music, and we think we've got that down pretty much. Right, uh, you guys are releasing single cuts, uh, which is uh, the first collection of all of your UK singles. Um, looking back, is there an era that you like the best? Wow. They're all, they're all special, aren't they? I mean, I don't know if you, I don't know if you think of everybody in this room lived through the 70s, and the 80s, <laughs> and then the 90s, and then we're already in 2011. It just seems too crazy to, to contemplate. I think each, each decade was special. I suppose to some extent the first one, because that's when we, we became professional musicians, you know, when you, when you have all that bit of that vinyl as it was, you know, you get one vinyl record each, and you look at it, you go, we've made a record, you know, you know anything could happen there because you know that recording potentially will be very, very slowly, you know, before the internet, before cell phones, before whatever, it will very, very slowly filter through the system and the word is out, you know, Judas Priest is here, but made a professional recording. So, the 70s is, is a time that I think we all look back at with some attention as well because you, you know, you saw. There's so many things to do and so many things to achieve, and um, it's a really, really cold time to, to kick the, the ball and get the game going.
Glenn, uh, can you talk a little bit about what it's like playing with Richie, doing the, doing the priest songs versus you know, what KK brought to those songs, and how does it feel different, and what does Richie bring? Back? Well, it's amazing, really, because um, obviously, you know, when Ken informed us that he was leaving, we, we had to think hard on the hard. We have two choices. We either carry on and we do the farewell tour, which is what we wanted, we, what we wanted to fan, we can think what the fans wanted. Or we, we could have ended the band. So, you know, obviously, uh, we just to find the right guy. And we honestly couldn't have found any better than this guy. I mean, you've only got to hear him play, you know, he's, he's a tremendous guy. Like, but the, the most amazing thing is he, he satisfies everybody needs to have preached his sound in his, in his role, you know, on the other side of the stage, if you like. And he does it in his own way, and uh, it's, it's, it's pretty unbelievable. He's, he, he blended into the band straight away. And as, a, as Rob said earlier on, honestly, if we haven't found Richie, I, I don't think we'd be going out now. So it's just worked out really, really well. Richie, can you talk a little bit about what it's like being in Judas Priest and kind of having to fill KK's shoes? I know online, you know, I see you doing these ribbons, you know, Zeppelin and Hendrix solos. I mean, is that, is that kind of where you came from? Are those the elements that you bring to free? I came from, obviously, that sort of area, yeah, like, you know, classic rock, Zeppelin and Hendrix and all that. And um, I think, you know, KK's plan was like Hendrix inspired as well, you know, so that, that's kind of similar there. Um, what it feels like to be a part of it, I mean, you can imagine it's a bit kind of surreal, really. You know, but, um, but it's very well as a fan of the band and of the genre. You know, they are big shoes to fill, but I know what I've got to do, and I'm not trying to, um, what's the word, you know, kill the band for a long time, you know, so I'm not trying to, you know, take over anything from that, take away anything from that, but as a fan and as part of the band now, you know, it's exciting. It's exciting as a guitar player and as a musician, you know. I mean, was it difficult, I mean, learning some of the three songs? I mean, they're not the easiest songs in the world. I knew some of them already, to be honest. Uh, you know, and it's, it's kind of where I come from, musically. So it wasn't difficult in a sense. You know, that's what I've been brought up on, that's what I've been raised on. And um, the ones I didn't know, it was quite easy to go in, you know. I said to Richie, come up, I said, and uh, come up to the house, and, you know, I'll, if you get stuck on any bits, I'll help you. And he showed me this. <laughs> <laughs> you know, songs I haven't played for 35 years ago, Richie, Richie got them down. I said, how's that going in you? <laughs> Uh, it was great. Have you guys written any new material together? We haven't. We haven't yet. No. But it's uh, you know through the early days we've uh, we're still in the process of rehearsing and that's taken up all our time and and then we've had to come over here for, uh, for something. something can't say. But, um, but um, I'm sure we will write. And when you hear Richie mess around, I know he'll inspire us, and I'm sure we'll, we'll collaborate and compose uh, together. So from this point on, Richie will be, but if you do, if there's any priest music, Richie would be the guitar player that's playing on it, not KK. Yes. Yeah. What do you guys think about Anthrax? Um, name me one of their new songs, Judas Priest. They did? When did they do uh, that? Well, that's my bad. I'm not sure if it's true or not. But I don't know if you guys knew about that, but apparently Anthrax paid a tribute to you guys with a song called Judas Priest. I'm surprised you've got Buddy Gaga with Jews on that song. <laughs> 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 I mean, when anybody does anything like that, in, in, in that way, it's just so, you know, we know what the last one is forever. But it is, you know, in that way, that kind of... You know, no, it's just for the same thing. Yeah, it's just for the same thing. 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 kind of passing the torch from, from band to band. And when we were growing up, we had our heroes and people that we we're excited to listen to and go and see a live concert and you just, you just keep passing it on and passing it on. That, that's really cool. I just have to text Scott, text him and start talking about it all. Are Rob, when were you shocked when KK decided to leave the band? Ev everyone was so shocked, yes. It was a very, very big deal, a very big surprise, you know. Yeah. And did, did any of you try to get him to not to leave? We did everything we could possibly do, yeah. I mean, this wasn't a, a, a simple open and closed type of situation. Everybody worked very hard to try and get to some kind of resolution, but we, we knew it wasn't going to go anywhere. That's when we almost went into panic mode because we had a tour early, you know, the tour was already coming together and we got the deals and promoters, the fans were excited. And then, um, you know, that's <laughs> <laughs> the guy. 
what a route and what a ride, oh my god, you know. Because he was he was just he was very, very difficult to try and deal with both circumstances, but you know, it's just that British way that stay calm and keep moving on and we you were able to do that. What kind of confusion do you feel that Richie was brought to Jewish priest? Youth. <laughs> I work hard. I work a lot harder in rehearsals, and I have a because I know I know this guy loves this band, you know, and we hate rehearsing, don't we? We hate rehearsing, but we have to do it. And um, I think there's a there's an element of, of just tremendous enthusiasm, as there always has been in the band, but but especially now, there's a, as I say, there's a great feeling of energy and excitement that we can go on and complete this world to deliver a new record. And uh, keep the priest alive. Now, if you do a new album, will your album also be called Happy Town? It's kind of up in the air. But we have some we have some titles that we're knocking around at the moment. But I don't think we'd be right to say it's, it's called this and then change. You know, the, 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 the material will kind of filter through, and then we'll eventually come, come to a, a definitive title for the record. Yeah. The blaring out show.